Okay, it is 7.32 p.m. on Tuesday, September 27th, 2022. Um, good evening, my name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Mr. DuPont is unable to join us this evening. Mr. Hanlon. Hi, here. Mr. Mills. Uh, here. Mr. Riccadelli. Here. Ms. Hoffman. Here. And Mr. Holly. Here. Good to have you all with us. Um, on behalf of the town, uh, Rick Valarelli, the board's administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. And uh, Vincent Lee, who's assisting us as well. He's in the, doing something else in the background as well. So not an issue there. Um, <clears throat> then checking who is uh, appearing on behalf of uh, 39 Woodside Lane. Uh, Paul Lassard here, architect. Oh, thank you. And on behalf of 7072 Oxford Street, uh, Ace Atar and Charles Aiden? Yes, we're here. Hi. Perfect. Making sure everyone is here. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2023 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is Just afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberation the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous people from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. <clears throat> Moving to item two on our agenda, the approval of the decision for 8082 Winter Street. Uh, this was a hearing that was held on September 13th. Uh, we had um, a request. We had uh, Mr. Hanlon prepared the um, draft of the decision uh, for distribution to the board. Um, comments came back. Mr. Hanlon posted a, an updated version that later this afternoon. Are there any further questions or comments from the board in regards to the written decision for 8082 Winter Street? <coughs> None. Um, the chair will accept the motion to approve the minutes, uh, excuse me, approve the written decision for 8082 Winter Street. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. 
There's a vote of the board to approve the written decision for 8082 Winter Street. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. The chair votes aye. Mr. DuPont uh, was pre voted on the hearing, but is unable to join us this evening. So the written decision is approved by a four to zero vote. Brings us to item three on our agenda, the approval of the meeting minutes from the September 13, 2022 meeting. These are minutes that were prepared by Mr. Valorelli, distributed to the board for questions and comments. Are there any further questions or comments in regards to the minutes for September 13? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes from the September 13, 2022 meeting? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. And a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. So a vote of the board to approve the minutes from September 13, 2022. Uh, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Mr. Holly? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. Brings us to item number four on our agenda this evening. The waiting room. Now turning to the public hearings on tonight's agenda, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicants to introduce themselves or themselves and make their presentation to the board. I will then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting to public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. So that number four on our agenda is docket number 3715, which is 39 Woodside Lane. Um, so if uh, Mr. Lassard would introduce good the project. And... Uh, oh. uh, good evening, Chairman Klein. This is Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. I'm representing the petitioner on this. Oh, good evening, Ms. O'Connor. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, I'm sorry, you. I couldn't get my speakers to work on my computer, so I'm calling in. Um, I will introduce the, the people this evening that are going to speak on this application, if I may. Um, uh, it, we have Stephanie Janvin, who is the general contractor, Paul Lassard, the architect. Mm -hmm. The owner is Mr. Jay Peterson, um, who is the principal of Better Homes Realty LC, LLC, and Richard Mead, who is the surveyor for Medford Engineering. As you know, this is a request for a special permit under section 5.4.2B6 for a large addition in a residential district. Um, I, and we did receive your email of today and uh, Mr. Lassard will address those um, issues that you raised in it as well in the context of his presentation. Great, thank you very much. So Mr. Lassard, if you wanna begin. Uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> I think one of the concerns was that uh, uh, side. Well, did, sorry, did you want to display the plans, or do you want me to put those up for you? If you if you could put them up, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Does, <clears throat> it does appear to be upside down, but um, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, right side up and then upside down. Okay, so this is the existing uh, situation with a, a small existing dwelling, uh, two, two story house, and uh, there's a separate garage. Uh, we're going to make, we're intend, <clears throat> intending to make a proposed addition, as you can see the outline and the words proposed addition, and uh, it will generally be in, in that location. And uh, we'll still have a separate garage. Uh, it will not be attached to uh, the new house. <coughs> um, one of the concerns was that uh, we did not have 
exterior elevations, but uh, they, they were provided in recent days. And perhaps we could look at those if you'd like. <clears throat> Certainly. Um, so just in the set, so these are the existing. Correct, those are the, those are the existing uh, house and existing garage elevations, yeah. <clears throat> this is the proposed. Okay, so so you can you can see in this uh, top elevation. Uh, the existing portion of the house is not seen because uh, of uh, the large addition. And uh, you can see the uh, rebuilt uh, existing garage to the right. Uh, in the lower elevation, you can see on the left side, the portion of the house which is actually existing and which will remain. And the portion on the right is, is uh, the addition. And uh, here on the top elevation, we can see that uh, uh, the uh, existing house portion is in the foreground and um, the ad proposed addition is, is, is in the distance here behind it. Uh, we are rebuilding the deck, which actually already exists. And to the left, you'll see the existing garage, which will be rebuilt. <clears throat> In the lower elevation, you, you, okay. you'll... In the lower elevation, you'll, you'll see the, uh, the rebuilt garage in the foreground with the addition on the left side and the existing portion of the house to the right. And uh, the, the deck, as I was mentioning, uh, is adjacent to the existing portion of the house. <clears throat> so these are the existing plans. You see, and these are the proposed first floor plans. You'll see the garage to the right is actually separate from the house. It continues to be separate. And the garage is uh, the existing footprint, with, uh, the same as the existing footprint of the, of the garage. <clears throat> so just for reference, um, these two windows in the family room are they looking into the sidewall of the garage or are they looking over the top of the garage? They're kind of look, looking at the side of the roof of the garage. Okay. Uh, they're at a higher level because of the, uh, the, uh, the angle of the land uh, allows them to look over the roof. Okay. <clears throat> if you look in the elevation, you kind of see to what extent they relate to the garage. <clears throat> And here is the second floor. At an angle, you see the existing portion of the house intersecting uh, the new addition towards the front. And there's the roof of the garage. <clears throat> Is there stairwell access to the attic level or is it just a pull down ladder? Uh, I, I don't believe that we're going to have an attic level. It's just going to be a, uh, a cathedral ceiling. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Mr. Mills? Yeah, I'm looking at the large space next to the garage, a large room there. Doesn't appear, appear to be any windows in it. Well, that's that's a that's just the uh, roof area because it's a it's a two story height, so or it's it's a tall height, not two stories exactly, but it's it's 
we wanted to show that it was a tall space, but the windows are below in the, in the first floor plan for that room. <clears throat> Go back to the elevations. So it's this volume here. Right. So on the, for the proposed portion of the house at the front, um, the eave line is set higher uh, and the pitch is higher than the existing. And I'm just curious if there's a specific reason for that. Well, <clears throat> we are uh, intending to preserve the angle of the uh, existing portion and uh, the client wanted the uh, spaces to be higher in the front bedroom. So uh, thus the, uh, the uh, higher angle of the roof and also the, uh, the, the, the edge, the, the uh, location where the wall meets the, uh, the ceiling would, mm -hmm. be, would be higher in, in the front portion of the house than in the rear. Okay. I, I think uh, the if you look at the front elevation, which is at the top of the sheet, um, I wanted to keep that roof up so that it 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 looked like an attractive front facade, because if the roof is down to the level where it is in the rear, um, it would it would, the soffit would be, the roof soffit would be so close to the top of the windows that it would be unattractive. I see. <clears throat> I need some breathing room above those windows to, to balance the look. Okay. In, in the rebuilt garage, are all the dimensions remaining the same or are there any changes? Uh, no changes to the existing garage dimensions. <clears throat> Switch back to the main application. Look at front. Those are the two plants we had seen before. <clears throat> so one of the, the questions that I had um, posed on, on reviewing the application has to do with um, the, the town's requirement for usable open space. So usable open space is a, it's an area of land that is at least 25 feet in two directions um, that is at least 30% the floor area, the gross floor area of the interior of the house. And on this site, it's tricky because there's also a requirement that it be, um, that 35% of it be um, not greater than 8% grade. And uh, this site is very, as a, a very large grade going down towards the, the point at the top of the sheet here. And um, along Woodside Lane going from left to right, it's also dropping off. And so the calculation for usable open space that was provided as a part of the application is incorrect. And I wanted to see if you could help us address what that number really might be. Uh, I, I could not calculate that off the top of my head. It seems complex with uh, um, a hilly site like this. So, mm -hmm. so it's... Uh, I was wondering if Mr. Mead maybe had done it. Had, does he have topography for the site? Yeah, we, we only had topography from the uh, curb line back to the back of the house. Okay. Do you know if the area between the house and the street is less than an 8% grade? Yeah, the, the, it's a 
the max is five and a half percent from the uh, the curb line to the front of the house. Okay. And then another so another question that had come up. Oops. Um, is the the attic area. So it's identified that there's 769 square feet in the attic, which is greater than 50% of the floor below, which is a larger floor area than it would be allowed to have, but we only count floor area that's greater than seven feet in height. Um, so I'm curious if this figure is correct, especially in accounting for the you know, portion of the house being having a cathedral ceiling. Well, um, <clears throat> certainly uh, in the existing part of the house where there had been some at what you'd call attic space, none of it was uh, at seven feet high. Okay. Um, so maybe these do, do not reflect, um, you know, the reality. Um, Of, of what is proposed. Right. And there's there's no attic space in the um, new portion of the house either, since there's cathedral ceiling everywhere. Okay. So based on the, um, <clears throat> This 4,145 square foot number, um, you would need to provide at least uh, 1,244 square feet of usable open space in the front yard. So I just want to make sure that you're prepared for that. Yeah, we should have we should have over that in the uh, the front yard section, um, as long as there's no change in. The uh, size of the driveway. Okay, so that was to be my next my next thought that the the driveway cannot overlap with usable open space. So it's important. Correct. Yeah. yeah. We're we're a little more a little more than thirteen hundred square feet uh, without the driveway. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then on the site plan. Um, have you prepared a tree plan for the town? Uh, I, have, I have not. I have okay. not. Um, so there's a tree in the, practically in this location, the front yard, it's a sort of a taller um, pine tree. Um, and you will probably need to have that reviewed with the town uh, if it's within the setback. Or beyond the setback, I should say, between the setback and the side line and the lot lines, that that would fall under the tree bylaw, and you would need to um, uh, work with the the town tree warden or the tree committee on that. Uh, we we have no issue uh, locating the tree and make, and finding out exactly where it is. Okay. Are there questions from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering if you could put up the topo map that, that we have from your GIS system. So the property is this piece right here. And so I guess my question is, when you go and look at this site from Woodside Lane, what I believe is lot 43 here, the, the house that is in there looks very, very close to the existing house, uh, which will of course get a lot bigger. And since this is a large addition, looking specifically at the impacts given the position of various things on the site, um, 
of neighboring properties is important. Um, and I wonder, I, it, I wonder how close 39, the, the houses there are. And I'm sort of interested in why it is that this is not, I mean, I can't tell from this picture whether whether the setbacks are, are met on either side, although 39 looks real close to the edge there. But I, I'm sort of concerned about the impact of the size of the structure at 39 on, uh, on the house that's on lot 43. Well, certainly the addition is to the front away from number 43. So um, there's nothing getting closer to other people. That's, that's one point. I think the, the issue might be just the sheer mass of the other structure. It, it certainly from the elevations looks a lot more imposing than the house that than the house of the size that's there that already looks pretty pretty much too enclosed on enclosed on it because it's a little hard to it's a, it's a little hard to ask a specific question here because you can't really see what this looks like from 43 and uh, I don't know if anybody from that house is going to testify on this uh, but I'd be somewhat concerned there about the sheer massing of such a large house uh, next to a more modest house and uh, one that uh, that is certainly very looks very close when you when you go out there and look at it from the street. Mr. Mead, based on your survey, the lot line is farther from the house than is represented here. Would that be correct? That's correct. Uh, we have the, the nearest point of the uh, of number thirty nine is uh, thirteen point six feet to the property line, so it's it's a uh, it's farther away than where the property lines are shown on on this uh, this topo map. Um, I do not know the the relative distance between the two structures, however. Your questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Chair. Ms. Hoffman. Um, I'm just circling back to the area questions that you already raised. I just remain a little bit confused about what the total area is because I think the, the total that's listed does include that attic space, the 700 plus. And if that doesn't actually exist, then the required open space area might be smaller. So I would just like to know, you know, what actual area numbers we're dealing with. I think that is something that the applicant might need to calculate. Um, would that be? I know we had, I had asked about some other calculations. Is would that make sense, Mr. Lassard? Uh Yeah, I would, I would say, um, you know, uh, we could uh, recalculate it. Um, I can't do it in my head right at the moment. No, certainly. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Um, I was just wondering, I have a theory that was laid out before as to where the 338 square feet existing comes from. But I'm con but I don't have a theory as to where that 769 feet comes from. I mean it, it's it's if there's actually no attic at all there, what is the nature of the mistake that leads you to put that number there? Somebody must have had some idea somewhere about that. And it would at least certainly satisfy my concern about it more if I had an understanding as to where where it is that figure might have come from. Yeah, it's hard to say uh, 
at one point, uh, I was under the impression that we were having attic space and maybe I filled out uh, the form at that time. However, uh, when I was later informed that this was going to be all uh, uh, cathedral ceiling, I did not uh, retrace my steps and go to the form. So that's, that's a thought. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Are there further questions from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccadelli. Um, may I just ask a question about the height of the <clears throat> new building? I, um, or the proposed addition? I, I see um, a dimension on the drawings, on the elevation drawings for the proposed of 28.3. Um, but it seems to be you know, measured from the front yard and there's a considerable grade drop. I just uh, wanted to know, maybe this is a question for you, Mr. Chair, um, uh, how, should, how should that be calculated? Um, is that off? of an average grade of the site or is it off of the front door? I would ask um, Mr. Valarelli to confirm, but I believe it's supposed to be based off of an average elevation at the perimeter, is that correct? Correct, Mr. Chairman. So if the, if the entire lot has a slope greater than 5%, the height of the building is taken from the average four corners around the house itself. If the lot has a, a slope <clears throat> of uh, 5% or less, basically flat, then the height of the building is taken from the average curb line abutting the property. Uh, in this case here, I think we'd be hard pressed to think that the entire slope uh, does not exceed 5%. So they would take an average around the building, usually the four corners of the building and average it out by. Okay. Thank you. That, that helps a lot. I, I think um, it will be useful to uh, understand what that number is from the average grade. Because just visually looking um, at the drawings, it looks like uh, maybe four or five feet away from uh, the, the sort of back elevation. I think another consideration, too, is with the first floor being so high is, so Arlington has a, differentiates between cellars and basements in terms of the average height, uh, the average amount of the basement that's of the lowest level that's exposed. And cellars are typically not included as gross floor area, but, cell, but basements are. And so, um, I think it would be helpful to have that calculation run so we can understand whether we're, this is a basement or a cellar, because at this point, um, there's, there's no basement or cellar in this uh, project. So it's slab on grade? Uh, maybe not a slab, but uh, it's, you know, uh, so this under this addition here is just fill? Correct. Okay. Mr. Chair, <clears throat> this is Pinkett. I had a, a question or two. Of them. Um, the mechanical room that's shown on the existing on the top left corner on the first floor, is that looks like it's below the new kitchen or um is that to the grade in the back? Uh, there's a mechanical room to the to the to the left front. The, the uh, right, yeah. In the existing, there is a mechanical room. That's correct. With that, is that below? Looks like you could walk out from that. There is a door there. Yeah, you, can walk, you can walk out on. Walk out on grade. It's below a deck. Is that the dash line? There is a deck of some kind above. Uh, the dash line represents a roof that was put over it as a shed. We've removed this feature. Oh. 
what what happens will this what happens to this space going to be a storage of some kind uh the the, the the mechanical room will go to a different location and uh that that shed roof is is removed from the project okay and then um my second question mr chair would be to look at the elevation and see if um, i i see the provision where you could align the windows if i may um if one could so thought um the front elevation um, the proposed east front elevation um it felt there's a a good chance we could align some of the window arrangements just from an aesthetic standpoint i mean i think i think there's merit to uh having uh asymmetry um we're working with the spaces inside and the spaces inside are based on the shape of the site. So, uh, you know, there's a lot there's a lot going on here. I think you have symmetry with a, a window left and right of the door, and um, uh, you know, I, I I don't I don't think we have to make it perfectly symmetrical. Right. I think it looks good as it is. I believe you have closets behind this area and behind this area. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. We can okay. look at the plan. Uh, it's, I think there might be a coat, a coat closet. Um, right. See there, there's a coat closet there, and then there's uh, another closet on the second floor. Any other questions from the board? None. Um, in a minute, I'll be opening the meeting for public comment. Uh, public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing to please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. <clears throat> you'll be called upon by the meeting host to be asked to give your name and address for the record, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. And once all questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. And I will do my best to show uh, any documents you need during the discussion. Um, before we formally open, we do have one comment that we received via email. Um, this is from the, the residents at, at 46 Woodside Lane. We're unable to attend the meeting tonight. Um, they felt the proposed plan to expand the, expand the structure at 39 Woodside Lane would create a structure that is too large for the neighborhood, it would contribute to the unaffordable real estate market already prevalent here in Arlington and they object to moving forward with the proposal as it currently stands. And that is uh, from Lyra Zimmer and Julia Keller of 46 Woodside Lane. Are there members of the public who wish to address the meeting? With that, the first hand that is raised is Mr. Moore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Uh, through you, a uh, quick question for um, the architect. Is there a particular reason why you chose not to attach the garage? To the uh, I, I believe that uh, there is a zoning issue. Uh, if you attach the garage, then uh, 
you, you cannot have the garage impinging on the setback. But oh. since it's an existing garage, it is allowed and it's separate. It's, a, it's allowed to be in the setback. So it, it's an unusual circumstance, but it, it, it's based on the setback position. Uh, that goes through the it's, it's, yeah, it's sort of yeah, in as long as you don't change it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, also through you, I noticed on the application the expansion from one from one parking space to two, but I've also heard there's going to be no changes at all the garage dimensions. I don't quite understand that. Mr. Lassard? Uh I'm uh, you know I I think it can park two cars in the existing, using the, the garage and the existing uh, driveway. So that's how I perceived it. The zoning requires you to provide one parking space, um, I believe in the single family district, and that would be within the garage. The space in front of the garage technically wouldn't count as a parking space because it's within the front yard setback. Okay, so, but you're saying that only one parking space is required. I believe that's correct. Mr. Valerelli, is that correct? Absolutely correct, Mr. Chairman. One parking space only for this dwelling. Okay. Right, so that just is a change that probably needs to be made to the documentation. It's one to one, not one gonna be changed to two. Uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I appreciate your point about uh, uh, coming up with a tree plan. It's, it's hard to tell from the pictures uh, on uh, Google Maps, where the trees are and what, what might be taken. It was hard to tell whether or not there was a large tree, a very large tree, I'm not sure where the addition is going, but I couldn't really tell. So yes, uh, I think a, a, a tree plan is, is appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Next is uh, Dan Schilder. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Diane Childer, uh, 50 Oak Hill Drive. And I apologize, my dog is uh, in the background um, and I'm a little nervous. Um, I am a neighbor. I am <clears throat> in agreement with the other neighbor about the large and imposing structure, more than doubling the size. I think we'll create um, an imposing structure for the neighbors. I'm also concerned about the tree that has been already raised. Um, in addition, for the neighbors who live um, below this new um, double, you know, 4,000 square foot house, there's a concern about water runoff um, in the conservation land and taking, you know, nearly 800 or more than 800 square foot of usable land. We already have issues in the neighborhood with water and runoff coming um, from high up on the hill. Um, I have not had a chance to hire an attorney and I would respectfully request at least a postponement of the decision so that we have a chance to hire an attorney and an independent, independent surveyor. Those are my comments. Thank you very much. Are there other folks who wish to address this hearing? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close. Um, may, may uh, Chairman Klein, may I respond? Um, let me, uh, sure, Ms. O'Connor. Sure, uh, just uh, briefly, um, I know that the board is aware of the fact that this petition complies in all respects uh, with setback requirements and open space requirements uh, and relief is only needed with respect to the issue of it being a large addition. And as Mr. Lassard said, that addition is towards the front of the property away from 43 uh, Woodside Lane. Um, this is by Arlington standards, a fairly large lot. And um, this is a substantial enhancement, I would suggest to you to the lot. Um, I, we, they have, the petitioner has set out in the petition the uh, section 3.33 criteria. I don't know if the board needs me to go through that, but it is set out in the petition. Um, 
And I would suggest to you that um, it is an appropriate use of that property. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would, in, in regards to the, the question about uh, runoff, um, where this is an increase in the impervious area of more than 350 square feet, um, there is review required by the engineering division in regards to um, how water is handled on the site. Have, have any plans been made in that regard, Mr. Lassard? Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, maybe Mr. Mead could ask that, answer that, but I, I, I have not heard it, anybody discuss that. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I believe the petitioner was waiting to get through the Board of Appeals before we crossed that bridge, but uh, we have not uh, done any uh, soil testing or uh, brought any plans uh, in front of any other uh, town entity. All right, so the question before the board, um, as, was, as was presented, this is a request for a special permit um, as a part of a uh, large addition, um, which is section 542B6 um, of the zoning bylaw. And the board needs to make a determination that the change is not um, significantly more detrimental to the neighborhood essentially, um, and that it meets the requirements of the section 333, uh, which is the, uh, the, the seven requirements for a special permit. Um, there have been a lot of uh, concerns about what exactly the a lot of the numbers on the, um, the dimensional parking information sheets, as well as on the open space first floor area information sheets. Um, and we have had some, some cases in the past where there have been one or two numbers that were a little off and we were able to sort of figure out over the course of the hearing what those numbers ought to be. And we have um, proposed moving forward with a vote um, and then asking the applicant to submit a revised uh, set of information along with the, as a condition of approval. Um, I'm a little concerned on this, that there really are very many numbers on here that are incorrect. Um, and as a result of things that have changed um, or sort of a misinterpretation of the usable open space requirements and so forth. Um, and I, for one, would be uncomfortable voting tonight um, with sort of the level of insert, uncertainty that, that these numbers um, present to the board and you know how other members of the board feel on that question. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. I concur with your opinion. I think we need better numbers um, and we have more of a straightforward decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, there, I would like to, I mean, assuming if we are going to get additional information, I would like to have more of an understanding of how large a house of this size is compared to other houses in the same <laughs> Um And I'd also like to have at least a preliminary addressing of the stormwater problem. I, I understand that's a technical issue for the engineer, but in anything that involves neighborhood compa compatibility, if we're putting the people who below this house in danger of a perpetual shower, that's hardly uh, consistent with the character of the neighborhood. So the two are not hermetically distinct, sealed. Um, and I, I think that, that we at least have to, or should take an initial look at that. Um, I don't know that we're in a position of knowing, knowing exactly how the hydrology is going to work, but I'd at least like some 
comfort that uh, if this is a problem, it's a manageable problem and we're not inadvertently introducing something that would really be in violation of the spirit of the bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. It's been alleged or represented that the uh, lot lines as are presented are not accurate and that they're 13 feet over, I believe was the recollection. I'd like to see a revised plot plan with the um, proposed new uh, construction represented with the revised uh, lines, just so we get a better understanding of the massing and how it would be presented to the neighborhood and how it would be to the uh, closest to the neighbors, if you will. I don't think that's too much to ask. No, I, I think it's uh, if I may, if I may, Mr. Mills, that was a, a instrumentation survey that was provided um, by Mr. Mead. Um, I don't think anybody said that the lot lines that we provided were incorrect. I think that um, the the um, GIS uh, the the map that you put up um, was not necessarily accurate. But what we've provided you is an instrumentation survey. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Correct. I think but by uh, you know looking at this, I believe that the the site survey um, that is you know stamped by Mr. Mead is you know accurate to to the best of his ability, and that the uh, the town's GIS map the the boundaries and the locations of the properties could be um, could be off just based on how those uh, those are generated. But I do think, to Mr. Mr. Mills's point, it's it is important that we, you know, have confidence in, in the information that we receive. And I appreciate you are pointing out that this is an instrument survey, um, and I think it would be, in order to be able to establish properly that we do have usable open space, I think it would be helpful to have uh, what topographic information. Um, is available for the portion of the site where the usable open space would be located. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you're talking about the height of the building, do you want to calculate from the, the, the level where the garage is? Is that considered part of the house in this calculation? Or uh, are we satisfied that uh, the uh, the corners of the house are acceptable as uh, the baseline. Mr. Valerelli. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, could you repeat that question? The question is the um, how the calculation is performed yeah. for the average grade at the house to determine the house, the height of the building. Uh, from the lowest point to the highest point, the entire span of the lot. Does that, does, that, does that answer your question, Mr. Lasad? Um, so is it the entire lot, Mr. Valerelli, yes, or yes. just the, where oh. the land touches the building? Mr. Chairman, it's the entire lot, as if a building did not exist on that property. It is the lowest point to the highest point, and that's how we determine the percentage of slope. Right. But in terms of generating the height of the building, is that done from where the land touches the building, or is that done relative to the average grade on site? Uh, it's a great question. It's done six feet off of the corners. Okay. Uh, and the reason for that is it prevents the builder from just backfilling up against the house and then uh, removing it after the fact. So the measurement is taken six feet off of the four corners. Okay, so it's, it's it's basically an average of those of the, those four numbers taken six feet off of the corners. That's correct. If the lot exceeds a five percent slope. Okay, and in this case, it would be more corners because of the the shape of the building. That is absolutely correct. Okay, Does that makes sense, Mr. Lassard. Yeah. Perfect. Are there any? Further questions that the board has they would like the applicant to address? Yeah. 
seeing none. Um, I think the board is looking to have the the dimensional parking information sheet updated, the open space gross floor area updated. Um, we are looking for the site plan to have uh, topographical information added to so that we can verify the amount of usable open space that's available. Um, and then there would be the, the new calculation of the um, the height of the building based on the, the averages was just discussed. Uh, and then there's a, uh, so a request is to get a sense of what the, um, so sort of where the, the tree is, that's any trees that may be impacted by the construction of the house and uh, just, uh, a basic sense as to what the approach would be to handling stormwater on the site, obviously understanding that the, the detailed um, design would not be occurring at this time, but just that we can get some level of um, assuredness that that can be addressed. And uh, Mr. Handlin, you had, you were trying to better understand the volume of the house, was that correct? Well, I, the, what I specifically had asked for is a sense of what the size of the houses in the neighborhood are. There's an issue has been raised that this is out of scale with the other houses in the neighborhood. And the only way we can address that is to understand better um, what the sizes are of the other houses in the neighborhood. I'd, I'd rather have something in the record than just go to the GIS system and read off all the ones nearby, but of course I can do that too. Mm. Mr. Chairman, we can uh, likely have all that information for the before the next year next meeting. That would be great. Um, so the next for the next meeting of the board, um, we have a meeting scheduled for um, October 18th, um, but that is the introduction of a new comprehensive permit application. Um, so if possible, we would prefer to go to the October 25th date, if that is amenable to you. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, Rick Valorelli. Yes, Rick. That's a good night for us. We have two uh, very light cases scheduled for that night, so that would work. Oh, perfect. And with that, um, I would entertain a motion to continue the special permit hearing 39 Woodside Lane until Tuesday, October 25th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. So may I have... So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. So it's a vote of the board. Uh, to continue the special permit hearing for 39 Woodside Lane until Tuesday, October 25th, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. Um, vote of the board, Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Rigardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are continued on 39 Woodside Lane. Thank, Thank you, you to all. all of you. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks brings us back to our agenda. Thank you. Um, agenda item number five, which is docket number 3716-7072 Oxford Street. Um, so I could ask the applicants to go ahead and um, identify themselves and tell us what they would like to do. And in the background, I will pull up the documents for this hearing. All right, well, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Aisha Aitar, 
and I'm here with my husband, Charles Iden, and Hello. our builder, Honor Margan. Uh, we appreciate this time with you. Uh, we're recent owners of uh, the property, uh, the two family home at 7072 Oxford. Uh, but we are longtime uh, residents of Arlington. Uh, we moved to the area in 2012. Um, our family has grown since then, and we've become you know, very much rooted to the area. Um, we've obtained a permit uh, to renovate our new property as of May of this year. And today we're here because we're seeking relief uh, for, uh, from the section 5.4.2, that is the dimensional and density requirements and uh, with regards to the minimum open usable space um, to gross floor area ratio. Um, we understand that this is an issue that comes up quite often here in Arlington, often discussed about here at the board. Um, so our renovation uh, involves a mere increase of 300 square feet in gross floor area. And that's not because we're changing you know, the footprint of the building. Uh, the increase is because we're adding two dormers um, in the attic. Uh, dormers are very characteristic of you know, the houses on Oxford Street. Uh, as well as our neighboring streets, Winter and Grafton streets, and really across Arlington. We're essentially um, you know, doing the attic, the dormers, because we want to add two additional uh, rooms um, to the upper units where we're going to be residing. Uh, after the addition, we're going to have a total of four bedrooms. Uh, that's enough to accommodate our uh, multi-generational family. My mother lives with us, we have a daughter, and my husband and I work remotely from, uh, from our home, so we do need an additional workspace. Again, we're not making any changes um, to the building envelope of the house um, or the height of the building. Uh, however, because our existing property is non-conforming in terms of uh, the usable open space to gross floor area ratio, it remains non-conforming after the renovations as well. It is not possible to make the property conform as is because we're starting out with um, the size of usable open space at zero square feet uh, due to the minimum dimension, dimensional requirements. So, so here we are, uh, we're seeking your understanding and pleading for relief on this front. We're happy to take your answers now. I mean, questions. <laughs> Thank you. So there's the lot, the plot plan. Um, it's the existing, and then just the dormers. Yep. So is this representing the second floor or is this the new? The attic. The, okay. Um, if, if I may jump in here, um, just to clarify, um, the, the change uh, on the front of the house uh, that is shown, uh, that is uh, the, the first story uh, enclosed porch uh, or covered porch, uh, unenclosed covered porch is staying as is. Uh, above that originally was a sunroom mm -hmm. uh, that ran the full width of the house, the entire front of the house. And um, uh, uh, Aisha and Chara wanted um, a, a deck, uh, you know, to enjoy the view uh, overlooking the sports fields and the school. So we have basically, uh, we, we gave up actually half of that sunroom, which was fully enclosed and converted that to an open deck. Uh, above the porch and um, extended the living room to the covered portion. And the, the change that you're seeing on the back of the house is really a reworking of the existing covered uh, two-story porches there 
um, to accommodate egress stairs for the for the two units. So these, I believe, are the proposed plans. Um, For so they, yeah. So as you point out, so the rear deck is slightly modified is modified so that um, there's an egress stair, so that provides a second means of egress from the upper unit. Um, right. And then this shows the rooms that are being created. Um, so down. this would be under the shed dormer to the one side, and then this is under the gabled dormer on the opposite side. Correct. And as you stated before, it's so this, you said originally this was all enclosed and now that this is the new line of enclosure and this is open deck. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so looking at the um, so then this is the plan the 9.2 is this current is the setback i'm assuming that's the existing setback is 9.2 yes and that's remaining that's right. and then on the back here this plan has it at 21.4 this has it at 21.1 is this the existing and this is the proposed it's slightly wider to accommodate the the stair uh, no i believe that would have been uh, perhaps because there was a disagreement between the existing field measurement the instrument survey and the drawings we provided uh, but in fact the existing uh, footings are, are staying wh where they are so we are matching existing dimensions there would you're be re no you're reusing the original footings yeah um, it's, uh, some of them, not all mm -hmm. of them, new ones will need to be provided, but the corner of the porch is staying exactly where it is with okay. the existing footing on the garage side. Because this is showing that the, indicating that the lock coverage is being reduced. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what was being done to reduce the lock coverage. Um, nothing really. I'm not sure why that would show such a change. Okay. Uh, yeah, both the front porch and the, the rear porches, the two-story porch there is, they're all existing structures and um, we're staying exactly in that footprint. Okay. Yeah, this is just the same documents again. on their side. Um, so the, the set doesn't have any information about what the existing conditions for the house are. And when I went by to take a look at the property, I noticed that all this work has already been completed. Um, so, um, so if you could give me a better understanding as to what, what the building was before you started because one of the things the board has to do is determine whether the changes, um, you know, whether whether they are they're you know substantially mm -hmm. more problematic or that's not the correct term, but you know for the district, but it's difficult when there are no existing conditions presented. Right. Um, so existing conditions uh, were actually uh, presented in the original permit that um, that we acquired uh, back in May, mm -hmm. and um, uh, detailed existing conditions were, were presented there. Uh, this, I believe, uh, is happening because um, uh, we we're actually using a, a more recent set here. And um, uh, this set is actually not uh, showing the existing uh, existing conditions. Um, so uh, basically what's happening to the house is if, if we look at the, the front renderings there, um, 
instead of the deck in the original house, uh, like if you were to look at the, the property card of the house, you would see that that's a full width enclosed sunroom with um, actual leeward windows. And so that's one area that we have reworked. Uh, and then, as I mentioned in the back, uh, the, um, the, the two story covered uh, porches there are, are having to get reworked so that we can achieve egress stairs uh, where there is none right now. And um, uh, we are taking out the, uh, the stairs on the inside of the house. Currently, there's a set of uh, stairs that, that are on the inside of the house that kind of provide that egress. Uh, but obviously, to, to be able to claim that as living space, uh, we decided to uh, you know, in, uh, convert those into the living spaces, you know, such as the, the bed, bedroom and the, uh, the kitchen areas. And, that's why the, the rear porches are having to get reworked uh, to provide the secondary egress means. Uh, zero footprint change uh, to the house. Uh, the only change here uh, to, the, uh, to the house is really uh, the addition of the, the dormers on the top. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. Would you like us to share <clears throat> uh, the original pictures before the uh, remodel work began? Well, it just occurred to me that Google Maps probably hasn't updated and they haven't, so. Um, <laughs> For sure. Uh, let's we do have some pictures. Yes. Yeah. So this is the Google uh, street view of the house. Yep. Uh, from March of this year. Um, so you can see there's that open, the open porch at the ground level. Um, and then this is the enclosed, uh, sort of the porch that was converted um, into a sunroom up above. This is the position where that gable dormer is now constructed. Jump down the street a little more. So from this side here, it's just a, a straight gable. Mm -hmm. And then are there other changes that are made to the facades of the sort of the window placements and things like that? Are they essentially where they were? Uh, no, windows have moved definitely um, because um, is some of the um, ba bathroom locations have changed. Okay. Especially on the second floor. Um, but uh, as you can see from the elevations, we, we took great care uh, in aligning the windows properly and making sure the uh, the first floor and the second floor windows were all the same size, identical units. And um, uh, essentially in keeping with the original aesthetic of the house. Uh, we did our best to match dimensions of existing windows. Uh, even the, the small square windows that you see there for the um, staircases and the bathrooms. Um, they're in very close relation to the dimensions of the original uh, windows that were found in the bathrooms and the staircases. Okay. And then just from my understanding, so at the basement level, um, towards the rear of the house, there are two egress window wells for bedrooms. And then towards the front on the driveway side, there are two that are just essentially light wells for uh, uh, like a family room or living room. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Are there questions from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So I'm sure that everybody watching this must be dying to know uh, what happened with this permit. How did, I mean, we, Ms. Saitar is correct that we very frequently get cases of this sort, but in almost all of them, they haven't built the dormer yet. And uh, I'm, a little, I'm curious as to whether or not, as to what the explanation is for this coming up now after the it has been built and we're, whether the permit was mistaken, whether it was exceeded, just what is the explanation for the fact that we're seeing this after it's been built? 
Um, no, the, no, nobody was mistaken and, uh, and nothing was exceeded. Um, the original permit was essentially um, conditional and um, it called into question um, the, um, the garage uh, to be able to uh, essentially, uh, you know, create uh, open usable uh, space uh, that met the 25 by 25 dimensions. So was the idea that you would somehow remove the garage and that would compensate for the increased square footage in the house so that there wouldn't be a net increase and therefore the percentage would change? Is that the idea? Essentially. And so what we're, the reason we're seeing you now is that you're having some second thoughts as to whether or not you want to remove the garage. And that's kind of what this is, what, what's at stake here really is your ability to continue to leave that as it is uh, and still do the, the project that you were planning. That is essentially the relief aspect, yes. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a perfectly um, a, a perfectly fine garage there that's in good condition that is in keeping with the garages of all of the neighbors. And um, uh, essentially it would cost a significant amount of money to actually remove that structure um, uh, which is again, perfectly functional uh, in good condition and um, uh, a very valid uh, use case from the owner's point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Other questions? And he also, uh, excuse me, he also consulted with the uh, building department and made sure that that is in fact our intention to have that condition first, but also go for a special permit and essentially uh, our motivation was not to be losing time because we're using a construction to perm type of loan and the, the loan um, term um, would uh, dictate us uh, to move swiftly. And that was our intention, but we made sure that our intentions were clear and we're you know, not Right. Tr trying to <laughs> trick your board or the building department or anything like that. So in, in effect, if we say no, you go back to the conditional permit that you had originally. We, we, would, we would have to, sir. Yeah. Are there, are there further questions from the board? Other questions? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and open uh, this hearing for public comment. Um, this is a refresher. The comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand, should be directed to the board. Purpose of informing the decision, members of the public wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the, using the raise hand button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. And those calling in by phone can dial star nine to indicate that you'd like to speak. You'll be called upon by the host and asked to give your name and address for the record and then given time for your questions and comment. So with that, uh, the first hand up is Mr. Moore. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I guess I need to understand better why it is possible to follow the timeline which has just been laid out uh, for us in terms of uh, why the building moved ahead as was. I, I understand that it was a conditional permit and they're changing their mind in terms of what they want to do and otherwise they go back to the conditional permit. But what is to keep a developer from pursuing a, an approach like that, changing things halfway through? I mean, what, what forces a developer to come up with a plan and stick with the plan that they came up with um, rather than do this sort of change midstream because the board now is under significant pressure not to, I mean, to, to now go ahead with this because it's been built. I just, I don't quite understand why, why this approach is, is allowable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you could just sort of answer that for me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, sure, Mr. Moore. So uh, my understanding of this case and Mr. Valorelli would certainly be in a better position to, to comment is that, um, they presented a, you know, a, a valid application where they were offsetting the additional gross floor area 
um, that is being provided by the by way of the dormers, uh, they were accommodating that by agreeing to remove the, the garage and create usable open space um, commensurate with the amount that they would need for this project. Um, and then whether at the you know at some point in time the decision was made that you know that that would be the that would be the A strategy and that would get them the building permit so they could start, but then um, they would then request from the board try to request a special permit uh, to allow them to uh, keep the garage essentially uh, by way of um, this the of this hearing um, can i uh, can i just share my screen uh, the permit application so that it's clear that uh, this plan uh, was communicated from the very get-go uh, i was just ask mr valerelli if he would just sort of confirm okay. Uh, that's true, Mr. Chairman. So I had a conversation with the building commissioner earlier, and that is the case. I, I hate to say roll the dice, but if they um, were granted the special permit, the property would remain as is. Uh, they did have a way to bring it into conformance if the board uh, denied the permit mm -hmm. uh, by taking the garage down and looks to me like shorting that porch a little bit as well. Uh, again, uh, this was um, my conversation with the building commissioner today. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, uh, my understanding, I think, is going to be a little bit closer to what Ms. Itar is, is is willing to demonstrate. But I have the sense that they, that from the very beginning, they had hoped that they would get, get the special permit and would proceed. Uh, they're not really leaving us in a, in an awkward situation because the worst that we could do is put them back to where they were prepared to be uh, when they got the permit initially. So essentially, if you get the permit with the condition and that gives you the opportunity to not lose the time uh, while they wait for us, uh, understanding that they will then go and attempt to get the permit that will enable them to obviate that condition, it's really... A, I mean, I think it's a creative and sensible strategy for moving things along. And it's very, very different from just building a building and putting themselves in the situation where to comply, they have to tear down the building. Here, they've already sort of accepted for themselves that there is an alternative that, if not desirable, is not unacceptable. And I don't feel particularly pressed one way or the other to do this. And in fact, if they hadn't done that, if we if, if this were really like all of our other cases, um, this hearing would have been over 25 minutes ago and we wouldn't have had a problem because uh, at least as far as I can see, this is not really distinguishable except for the fact they've already built the building uh, is not really distinguishable from the other cases that we have that are like this. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moore. Tell me, is there any requirement that they apply for the special permit in, in a timely enough fashion for you folks to be able to weigh in on it prior to building commencing? I'm not sure when the special permit was applied for. However, you folks have had time on your dockets for the past months, and I'm sure this building took a while to complete. Why, why was the application for special permit not made more recently than now? I cannot say why. Um, the Permit was received on August 26th. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, the next would be uh, Rebecca Lane. Hi, good evening. Trying to good get evening. my screen as well. I'm Rebecca, and that is Adam Lane. And we're at 77 Grafton Street. We are that uh, light green house that you saw right behind uh, the Google street shot um, of the house that's going up. Um, and we uh, wanted to voice our support um, for what uh, um, Aisha and Charles are trying to do um, to the house. Overall, we have been extremely um, pleased by the choices they have made. It really is keeping with the neighborhood density and the old fashioned porches. We were very worried we're gonna disappear and instead they've actually made them look nicer. Thank you to, um, is it Onar? 
yes. um, owner. Um, and so we look directly at those dormers. Our bedroom basically faces them. Um, they have not obstructed our view of the park or uh, anything else that we could see prior in any way. Um, and uh, as far as we know, we certainly don't have the measurements, but the yard has remained exactly the same as it was prior. Um, and goodness knows in this area, you need a garage. So it seems frankly silly to us um, to ask them to not have a garage um, in that the, the footprint as they stated remained exactly the same. The yard looks exactly the same. Um, and in many ways, the house, if anything is better. So we hope you approve it. And we are looking forward to having new neighbors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much appreciated. Absolutely. Uh, I, I would just say that uh, with some construction in the neighborhood being um, sort of at odds with the local character, um, it's just very nice to have uh, some sensitive improvement uh, done, especially adjacent to our own property. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions, or, excuse me, or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. I'm gonna go ahead and share, this is the uh, memorandum that was issued by the Department of Planning and Community Development in regards to this property. Um, so the, the planning department reviews special permit applications that come before the board and provide um, some assistance with uh, some of the concerns that, that may be raised by the application um, and they review the special permit criteria. So as they note here, um, applicants not increasing the footprint of the existing structure, the addition would not increase any of the non-conformities of the existing structure. Um, as we had said that there is just a slight increase in the gross floor area of the property and because usable open space is calculated based on the gross floor area. There is a technical increase in the deficiency in the usable open space uh, that is generated by the, um, the increase in the size of the building. And as Mr. Hanlon said, this is something that the board sees very routinely. Um, and that the addition of dormers um, are very common uh, throughout not only this neighborhood, but the, the town in general. Um, so just a quick review of the special permit criteria um, that the requested use, it's a permitted use, it's a two family house in an R2 district. Um, the existing two family house is not gonna change, it will remain a two family house. It will just have more uh, space inside, provide additional living space, it will not increase the traffic congestion or impair public safety. It's not imposing on the sidewalks or the streets. Um, it will not, create an additional burden on any municipal systems. Uh, there's no need for a special regulation. The only special regulation would be uh, the, it, it's the board's ability to, um, to act when there is an increase in, an, in the intensity of an existing nonconformity, which is what is being requested here. Um, criteria six, the integrity character of the district. Uh, so this is, uh, where the residential guidelines are applied. The residential design guidelines were adopted by the town um, to help guide residential development, um, and particularly in things that come before the Zoning Board of Appeals. So as they note, um, you know, this is very consistent with the residential design guidelines. It complements the style of the existing structure in the adjacent homes in the neighborhood. It will not detrimentally impact the neighborhood or the character of the district. And criteria seven, it does not create a detrimental excess of any particular use. Again, this is the location of the house. Well, this is the condition uh, presently as it's under construction. And then in the summary of their analysis, uh, they maintain the proposal is consistent with special permit criteria. Stop at that. Are there any further questions from the board for the applicant? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Just wanted to, to, to squeeze in. I, I 
my daughter goes to school, my granddaughter goes to school in this area and I had occasion to pick her up from school and then walk by this house um, uh, on the way home. Uh, and normally we're in a situation where we have to speculate on what a property looks like, will look like after the changes that they're asking for have been made, but now we pretty much know. Um, and I can say that as you walk down Oxford Street, um, this house as it is right now fits right in. It's actually somewhat difficult to see the dormers from the street. Uh, you, nobody, if, if, but for the fact that it's obviously not occupied now, uh, you, would never, you would never see this as being in any way inconsistent with uh, the line of tree, the line of uh, of houses that exist today uh, on Oxford Street, um, and so while usually I think that a project is going to be consistent with the character of the neighborhood, I th I think now I can say that I know that this one would be consistent with the with the general look of the of uh, of the neighborhood. I I wouldn't necessarily encourage people to go ahead and build their houses and then ask for their permits. Um, but at least it offers an unusual glimpse now. And, uh, and I'm influenced by, by having, having done that today. I also, by the way, taught my granddaughter what dormers were. She was fascinated. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Other questions from the board? Seeing none, so we're the board to vote to approve this evening. Um, the board has three typical standard conditions um, that would be attached to the uh, decision. The first would be that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and submission uh, specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, number two is the building inspector is hereby notified that to monitor the site and proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time it is determined that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. Yeah. And the third condition is that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. Are there any other conditions that members of the board would ask the board to consider? Seeing none, uh, what the board has before it is a uh, request <coughs> or uh, relief under the zoning bylaws under section 813B. Uh, whereby the existing nonconformity in regards to usable open space will be intensified by the addition of um, dormers on the attic floor of the existing house, which increases the gross floor area, which increases the need for usable open space. Um, and the board can make a determination um, to allow that uh, under section six of the chapter 40A, and under section um, 813B of the local zoning bylaw. And Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Um, I I'd just like to say for the record that when we get these cases, we've tended, and I've been writing the opinion, so I've tended more than anybody to say that we also find that there's a uh, extension of the nature of the nonconformity which is the predicate of our making a section six finding. But the truth of the matter is that when the cases come to us, there's already at least implicitly been a finding to, of, to that effect by uh, ISD, by the building inspector. Um, and those have generally not been challenged in the cases before us. So we've been really accepting those uh, going forward. Um, and that and that has rarely been an issue because we usually are find ourselves able to make the section six finding. But here I would like to just basically say that that in writing the opinion, I would propose that we say what I think is more accurate, and that is is that the 
finding of an extension of a nonconformity has been in effect made by ISD. That's ISD's call in the first instance, unless it's appealed to us. And that what we will have done is made the section six finding and granted the special permit uh, and leave the record that way. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. I think that's very appropriate. With that, um, entertain a motion in regards to this special permit. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the uh, ZBA, uh, the board, grant the special permit subject to the conditions that have been uh, read into the record. I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. The board has before it is a motion to approve the special permit for 7072 Oxford Street with the three standard conditions as motioned by Mr. Hanlon and seconded by Mr. Mills. Any questions from the board on what we're voting on? With that, we will roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont is unavailable this evening. Um, so I will ask Mr. Holly if he would be going to vote on this application. Um, with that, uh, roll call vote of the board, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. The chair votes aye. The special permit for 7072 Oxford Street is approved. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Thank you very much. So with that, just a review of the upcoming meetings um, and milestones for the board. Uh, so we do not have a meeting on Tuesday, October 11th. Uh, we have that night off. But uh, to make up for it, the comprehensive permit application for 1021-1027 Massachusetts Avenue, which is being called the Residences at Millbrook, that application was filed last week with the town um, and was certified by the, uh, by the town clerk. And so as is required under state law, the the uh, application was distributed to town boards and commissions within seven days, and the board has 30 days in which to convene a hearing. And so working with Mr. Valarelli and the, the schedules of the, um, the newspapers that we have to publicize through, uh, we couldn't put it together in time for October 11, which is why it's going to be on October 18th uh, at 7.30 p.m. We will be convening this under Zoom um, as we have been all the last two years. Um, so the, the oh, hearing will be opened on the 18th. The board then has until November 2nd uh, to make it to decide if it is going to make an assertion uh, under the safe harbor provisions of chapter 40B. These are the provisions, excuse me, that allow um, a town to have the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals be final and not appealable to the Housing Appeals Committee. Um, the board has what this was asserted for um, the uh, Thorndike place and it was the town uh, lost on appeal on that and the final decision was to occur when the hearing was reconvened under the housing appeals committee and then the applicant withdrew from the housing appeals committee and so um, that has now effectively fallen by so and the board chose not to assert um, on when for 1025 R Mass Ave or 1190, 1165 R Mass Ave because um, at the time the board didn't think that it met the criteria. Uh, the approval of 1165 R gave us a one year uh, stay of uh, new applications and that expired back in August. And so this application is free and clear. Um, we've asked the planning department to uh, review the record to determine whether or not the town meets any of the statutory minima under law and they are reviewing that and so we will have to make a determination on that hopefully we'll have that information in hand uh, by the 18th so we can uh, do that at the same hearing once the once the comprehensive permit is open we have 180 days which brings us to april 16 2023 uh, hopefully we'll be done a long time before then. Um, and then we have 40 days after that to file our, our final decision. 
So um, I'm planning to put a, trying to schedule a planning meeting with the applicant and the, um, the town to sort of plan out the this, this sequence of hearings uh, so that we can get that in front of the public and everyone can sort of understand how this is gonna work and how it's gonna flow. And um, so that's coming up on October 18th. And then we do have a hearing on October 25th. Um, as Rick said, that we have two new hearings that are coming up that night. Uh, we also have the continuation of Woodside Lane from tonight. Um, and also the uh, remote participation study committee has asked to come and address the board. Uh, they're getting ready to start their uh, hybrid meeting pilot plan. Um, and so they had wanted, we had, a, we had agreed to be part of one of their test subjects. And so they're getting ready to start that. So they wanna come and talk to us on the 25th. So that will be going on on the 25th as well. So that's what we have coming up so far. Um, there are any questions about any of that? No, it's all very exciting. And with that, unless there is there anything else, any other questions for the board? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the meeting. I thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting with the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I would especially like to thank Rick Valarelli, Vincent Lee, Kelly Linema, and Marissa Lau for all their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings. And as our understanding, the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. And that email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. So to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Handel. And the second. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Vote to adjourn. Roll call vote of the board. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Hi, I'm struggling with my unmute tonight. Hi. <laughs> it's quite okay. Mr. Holly? Aye. Wonderful. And the chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all so much. Great. Great. Nice job, guys. Good night, everybody. Good week off, and see you all on the 18th. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.